Hi everybody, and welcome to part hello, hello. two of our full album review for Megadeth's Euthanasia Project. That's right, this is the Rock and Beards podcast, the show where we break down non-hip-hop albums track by track, giving mm-hmm. thoughts and opinions on every single song. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. I am your lady friend, Bonnie. And the kinds of albums that we talk about is stuff just like Megadeth's Euthanasia. All right, so this is part two, meaning we've yep. already gone through the intro bit. We're reviewing this because the homeboy Scribble used his Patreon powers to uh, request this. So if you want to support us on Patreon, you can check that out. Track by track, album mm-hmm. reviews, deep dives, what? Yep. Um, Doing it all. Also, a little plug. I make music myself. Put out a track last week. Put it on another one next uh, on the 15th. All the links down below. You can check it out. Follow me on Spotify. That would be real cool of you. Anyway, for this one, I brought out Gertrude. I forgot that's my bass i used to play bass for a minute a highlight of my bass career as far as y'all might be concerned is i can play a weak ass slow run to the hills but i can i can gallop i don't know if you can hear it but i learned to do it with my fingers and i'm pretty proud of that it took me about three months trying to get that rhythm pattern down on my pants on the bus before i could comfortably like do it it took ages but i can gallop to the day I die with my fingers <laughs> playing slowly. I'm not fast with it. I got little fingers. I digress. I don't know. We here. We excited. I'm excited. Bonnie might not be excited. There's still the whole second half of the album to get through. Check out part one because that's the good part. Unless you've already watched it and you, you awesome if you watched it. Yep. Um. Anyway, without further ado, the next track on this project is called Blood of Heroes. That's true. I was discussing this song with the homeboy Nuclear Convoy, and he says, Blood of Heroes is one of their best and most underrated songs. Now, this guy is a diehard Megadeth Mm. fan who can compete for knowledge and love with any of y'all that are diehard Megadeth fans, I promise. So he felt that way about this track. Myself? A little bit less that way about this track. Yeah. Now, do you know why that may be? Why? Because if we go back to the whole story art and narrative and the arc of this, we've reached a point where they're on the road. There's the temptation and the death of it all. We've had this whole first, like, Dave's Mustaine story of, like, Megadeth crumbing to fruition and then dealing with the consequences, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. They back on the road, and then this one comes through. This one is for the fucking fans. This is for the people. You know, when facing with the Killing Road, they... Because remember, they're going to the Elysian Fields, which is where the heroes are at. Mm -hmm. At this point, they've made the decision to win, to become amazing. And therefore, they have the blood of heroes. They never die. And so this is honestly what I believe to be almost like a promise and... To like never give up. And like a dedication to their fans that they're here. This is such a for the fans song. Mm -hmm. Like it's a deep cut for the fans. Like if you are at the show and you love Megadeth, this is going to be the one that like I could picture people like bonding over in the nature of what it may be. Given I've been a Megadeth fan for about a week, I just (laughs) don't have that same level of deep attachment to it as much so i was kind of left with more of the feeling of the track without that deep emotional connection to the story of it all Mm -hmm. but how do you feel about this song um i don't know i mean they're they're definitely going through some shit you know and they're talking about like kind of what they've been through um and you know that they've you know been close to death and um but they're still here and they're just really just going to give it to you and show you how wild and alive they still are and um you know that they're exactly like you were saying like they're not giving up like they're not um you know they're still going to be here and they're you know he's kind of realized like he's going he wants to live he wants to be able to live to give you music and uh, to keep telling his story and to keep, uh, you know, entertaining everyone. Um, I think, you know, it is what he's born to do, I guess. And, um, you know, and kind of, but also saying kind of like, you know, while we're still here, you know, basically like while we're still in the land of living, um, we're going to just keep on kicking ass and bringing it to you. So, 
that's what they're going to keep on doing. And it's all right. And it's basically about, uh, you know, invincibility and all of that. Um, I really liked the, the bridge. I thought that was awesome. Ladies and gents, we're still alive by the skin of our teeth. Now it's killing time. Angel in our pocket, devil by our side. We ain't going nowhere because heroes never die. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it really is. Like, they, you know, he's... He really did, you know, he died um, physically, you know, he was, um, you know, his heart stopped and he came back and, you know, even that, you know, you know, he can't, he can't be killed, you know, he, he came back and, you know, so li really by the skin of his teeth, he's still here and he's still going and he's going to, he's appreciating life and he's going to give it his all for, because he loves the fans and he really appreciates them. So, yeah, I mean, it's good and, you know, they're just sort of like... You know, I think of like a, a like an immortal um, hero, like Hercules or something like that. Like that's kind of like what he's kind of comparing himself to a little bit. Um, and yeah. it's a 4.25 on 5 for me. I like the way it starts and it, it kind of has this heavier groove to it. Like it's definitely kind of feeling more on that, I, mean, I don't know, the like groove. Like you just feel like there's a vibe to it. It's maybe not so hard hitting. It's mm -hmm. more like, I feel like this is more of a throw your lighter up and your hand waves kind of back and forth kind of a vibe going on. And it's pretty strong. Um, versus it's our, not that slow. No, but like it's not quite fast compared mm, yeah. to this album. I guess. Right, like it's slowed the, the yeah, down. Yeah, it's slower, but not. I don't think it's quite like. But it's like it's kind of like. Well, it's not as slow as it gets, but yeah. it is still. It's mid range. Me, relatively <laughs> speaking, it's on the slower end of this okay, project. Okay. okay, like to me, like it's uh, or at least it feels less intense. Yeah. Like it feels kind of like. Like, this is more of a grandiose celebratory song. Like, everyone's kind of vibing here. We're all chilling. It's like there's this groove that captures this. Like, it feels like unity, honestly, yeah. on that front of it. And I don't know. The, the verse is fine. Like, walking stiff, let me tell you, better left for dead. And now we're on a mission while it's full speed ahead. It's pretty clear that he, he was having some bad times. Maybe everyone thought bad things, like the future of the band was in question. Well, that's over. Now they're full speed ahead. My legions when we do the crime. Let's get one thing straight. To get there early is on time and showing up on time is late. Now, I really like that because, you know, like, it's some real wisdom that he's dropping here. Like, through all of his adventures and all of this, it's like punctuality is the key takeaway to everything. Like, it's a weird kind of lesson. Like, I mean, it's like if you're going to rock hard and you're going to live life to the edge, be courteous of other people's time and like be be aware that like you can't be leaving things to the last minute you have to plan it out and i feel like there's a sense of, of like on this album dave realizing that without efficient planning in his life things didn't go the way he wanted so in a sense it's like communicating effective time management and scheduling in your life keeps you in control and if mm. you think about it from like a 12-step perspective you're supposed to have a structured schedule so that you can kind of have more control and shit and you're not just living anarchic like and allowing yourself to be run through it all so i thought that's so interesting like this little subtle wisdom nugget that really like who the fuck doesn't need that lesson especially in this continent i mean i don't know if you've seen the state of montreal hip-hop shows but does on time even exist anyway um and i love the the way the melody that ladies and gents we're still alive by the skin of, and you just feel like that like i think it's also like that performance thing too because like, the ladies and gentlemen you know like but i just feel like you can't sing this without like your arms flying in these dramatic poses and you know like it feels it just feels triumphant it feels so powerful so on that front it's really cool like i really enjoy the song i think it's got like a great groove to it I am much more into a couple other tunes, don't get me wrong. Like, I'll just be sitting there now and I'll be like, a tout le monde. It's crazy. A tout les amis. All the time. It's in, it's in I think, I, my I, head I, I too. I can't get it out of my head. Like, yeah. that's some earworm shit. On the other hand, though, that hook on ladies and gentlemen, like, that's as good of an earworm. Like, I want to give him credit. Like, when they write them fucking hooks, they are writing the hooks. And it's melodic little things that get stuck in your head and you can't get rid of it. That's some excellent shit. Effectively, that's what um, Chad Kroger and Corey Taylor compete over. Who can write the stickiest shit? <laughs> 
I mean, that's what it's, he's trying to do with Stone Sour, at least. Maybe not so much Slipknot. Uh, anyway, I uh, then you got the... That's kind of it. There's really just... You know, then there's another little verse. We've been run down every hill, chased up all the dead-end streets. But if you try to kick us out, you'll get a kick in the teeth. So they still have their attitude. They still have their edge. Don't fuck with them. In a yeah. sense, hold up. How hip-hop is that? We all gangster. We come through and we hold our shit down. We're willing to do what we got to do. But effectively... You can't get rid of us. We gonna come in here and do it with style. And if you fuck with us, we shall then retaliate. Okay. Now this is the way it spit with the OGs in the proper hip hops, all the ones that we respect, all the classics. They're always like, I don't wanna pull my gat, but if you come at me, I'll pop you. I feel like that's what Megadeth's doing here. Just saying. Okay. And that little part of it right there. I thought that's cool. Then, you know, they got a lot of good music playing through. It's it's triumphant. It's grandiose. I feel like you need some blow torches and some fireworks and shit for this track. Uh, this could be, like, right up. Maybe not, like, a closer, but, like, like the closer before you get the really good shit in the encore. You know, like, it has that kind of a feel <laughs> okay, to it. Okay, yeah. Because you're obviously going to get the good shit in the encore. Yeah. Uh, but this is a nice tune. I could see how, like, at a, especially at a live show, this one bangs fucking hard. Uh, kind of, in my opinion, because it will break from some of the heavier, heavier shit. Still, I give it a 4.35. I feel like it's more enjoyable than the last couple that we were talking about. And, like, from here on out, the album just picks right the fuck up. It feels like this is, like, the slump of a couple of tunes that felt were a little, little less good or is over. And it's just fucking dope the whole way through. However... I have a lot of trouble tying the next track into my story arc. So let's talk about Family Tree. So I'm left to wonder how many people would like sing this shit at their girlfriend. Not necessarily considering the context of what I believe the song to be because of a genius. Just like casually like, let me show you how I, you know, hip thrusting and everything. I can see like my, my dad doing some shit like that back in, you know, a little stone back in the day. A little more rambunctious. Mm -hmm. um, then, because when I first heard the song, I'm like, is this a love song? It sounds like a, like a good, like, it sounds like something like. But when you look a little bit deeper. It's, it's real different. But uh, yeah, I was just real curious. Like, I'll be honest, as far as the story art goes, I can't place this. I Googled and I tried to see if Dave went I, through some shit. I couldn't find Dave going through this kind of shit. Um, did you find Dave going through this kind I of mean, shit? I didn't, I didn't look it up. I just assumed that it was him or you know maybe like someone close to him but mm, it sounds kind of like him it sounds like super personal but again i don't i couldn't yeah. find anything that alluded to it although dave certainly says chris back in the day was getting chris was in the band not our chris uh but this guy chris from like one of the original lineups uh was getting sexually harassed by an engineer and that it happens to guys too and he was pretty vocal in the me too for like you know just letting okay. you know that it's pretty universal and he stands for women and he respects women and great i like dave honestly the more you read about him and see it, it's like dave dave mustaine's a good misguided dude like once he's like the he, he's learned you know he's you know he's went through everything and he came out you know good on the other but, side but right? he's like he's such a cool story right like his you have other examples of people who at like old ages are kind of shitty after going through everything yeah and dave just seems like such a good dude i don't know i i can't help it the more i've learned about him the more i become a fan of megadeth then i've listened to some other other stuff i'm really into it i can't help it uh but what do you think of this song so yeah this one is definitely it sounds a little bit darker um, and, uh, I wanted to mention because like one of the lines, right? I just, this is just, a, this is just a Bonnieism. Um, <laughs> one of the lines is like the, the tigers eat their young. Um, and I looked that up because I love tigers. Like I'll challenge the tiger king because I love tigers and, um, uh, it's rare that that happens, that tigers actually eat their their cubs because you know it only really happens if it's like deformed or if like the mother is starving and you know like if if the if like the mother dies and the baby's gonna die anyway so it's like might as well you know if it's on its like last legs you might as well eat the cub and try and survive um you know because that's just the reality of things in the animal world but anyways i just wanted to say that little tidbit of information for you 
Um, but yeah, this definitely sounds like child abuse, um, this, this whole song. And, um, you know, definitely maybe something that he went through. And, you know, it, it is also quite, um, it sounds very sexual. So it's clearly uh, sexual abuse as a child, which, you know, really sucks. And it kind of also, like, I mean, it's just the worst, really, right? Um, and it sounds like someone in, like, his family did that to him. And, you know, or at least that's what I'm, you know, taking from this and considering that it's called family tree you know he's keeping it in the family um and told him to you know and the, the adult told him or the abuser uh told him to just you know keep it their secret which is like like the typical thing that you hear um when you know there's like these stories of child abuse that come out that everyone's just like oh hush hush and of course you want to keep it hush hush because it's disgusting what you're doing um and yeah that's that's what it is and it's really like a hard um subject to cover and it's definitely not something i've ever that i can think of like heard talked about so like blatantly um and you know it definitely sounds like he was hurt really really badly and um probably is like you know one of the root causes of you know why he did got so heavily into like drugs or uh alcohol and you know needed therapy and stuff like that so like i don't know if this happened to him but it would i mean it kind of makes sense uh i mean i don't know i mean it can happen right. to everybody and anybody I mean, right it's, it's pretty plausible that if it did happen to him he along the way has heard some stories of course and you know it, then it does become very close to your heart and you know that you don't want your you know people that you loved getting abused either or having been abused in their past and having it affected them today so i mean that you know it could very much be that as well it just it just comes off like very personal so that's kind of why it leads you to believe it might be him um but yeah i mean it's uh, it really is just like a great powerful song and it comes off like you were saying like you know you almost wouldn't if you weren't really paying attention to what's being said and you only caught like really like the chorus um it doesn't really come across as like so bad um but then when you listen to like what it is it's yeah it's, it's pretty bad um and I'm, I'm really glad that he's able to like use his um you know his music and his, his art as an expression of like you know the pain that he's feeling or you know uh, the empathy that he's feeling for somebody else that has gone through this and to be able to talk about it uh so openly and like easily i guess and um you know and just to let other people know that like you know this is a real thing and you know i you know i get it and you know we're, we're here together and just kind of like that support system almost that other people you know have gone through similar things so i guess this is a 4.8 on 5 it's really great yeah i thought it was really strong like musically it's tight it has like these riffs that i just feel like they just play over and over and it almost masks the intent of the song right like mm -hmm. you're you're almost like vibing to this like you're almost throwing your like hands up and like da -da -da -da, like headbanging it's all heavy and i feel like it's so cool the way that he did this and I agree with you. I think using your platform to touch on, especially on an album called Euthanasia, where in a lot of ways this has been about Dave, but if and we take killing a, children almost like their souls, right? But if we take a step out of the Dave element of the album and just consider everything he said as though it's just any youth, maybe just go a step back with it. Mm, true. Because I do believe most of this album is written about some his personal experiences, but it also feels like a blueprint for overcoming and empathy for the situation of how life is complicated. And as we'll see on the next track, how the youth have been betrayed and shit. Yep. And so if we tap into just why you get to this point where you need to become the blood of heroes, whether it is this kind of trauma or maybe it's an abusive father and you have to run away and sell drugs at 15 or whatever the story may be, most people who achieve some level of genius and greatness unfortunately have gone through a high level of trauma in their youth and that's just what it is. You don't, you don't end up having that kind of point to prove unless you've been through some shit is my theory in life. So the happy people tend to not go beyond mediocrity so often mm -hmm. um 
but that's all right. Uh, I think it's so co because it's not like direct. You actually have to take a second to think. Uh, the Tigers Eat Their Young is allegedly based on an Al Capone quote, where I looked it up and apparently. And <laughs> we looked said, up different things with well, that quote. <laughs> now I know. Well, it's because somebody in the Genius said it was an Al Capone quote. And from what I can tell, like it actually was an Al Capone quote. Now I know why Tigers Eat Their Young. And it has to do with dealing with teenagers being fucking shitheads. And. <laughs> <laughs> he's like funny. I thought that was kind of funny that even Al Capone has to deal with shitty teenagers yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious um, anyway but yeah forgotten things remembered the tigers eat their young the body stayed but inside head the mind was on to run so I mean this is clearly like blacking out the tigers eat their young being an allusion to some traumatic situations and you know not good stuff yeah. going on and I mean it's pretty clear that the to me that the abuse is more of a uh, sexual in nature rather yeah. than other kinds of abuse but i do believe it's a bit open-ended and a betrayal of trust in most ways but yeah. it's kind of whatever like a conspiracy of silence the only way out of pain is turn around run through it man too wet to come in from the rain it just feels like you're staying like everyone kept it quiet everything was lies and when you really do hear these stories, like you said, it always is like the kid tried to tell the mom, but the mom wouldn't believe it, or the this, or the that, or yeah. the way people willfully told blind eyes. Or I'm watching this random ass Australian lawyer show Rake, and they just touched on the priest situation, which I thought was bold for an Australian show to make something so direct. And they put one of the def every shows like the lawyers defend he defend some shit, but it's always some weird out there stuff. And in this case, it was the priest on a defending that he had like received a letter hmm. and that he kept quiet about it. And then he wins the case. They can't prove anything, fine legally. But then he throws the letter down and he's like, turn and you're just like, fuck, right? Like this is a this is like a real thing that really does happen and still happens, I bet, to a lot of kids and people and situations. Like Yeah. I think if a child tells you that they have been a victim of abuse or something like that, that no matter what your you know, oath is, I think you should do something about that. But then he also like touches on another really powerful idea i know they were doing it to you but don't try doing it to me and it is the idea that most of the people who end up abusing people in that way were themselves the victims of abuse paying almost this cycle forward mm -hmm. and i know that the popular opinion is to just throw these people in jail and fucking shoot them and shit but i i believe that there needs to be some kind of research into the therapy that way help these people yeah i'm just i mean we all have our demons i mean but that's but it's like there is a, a problem and i think that the vilification of the problem kind of keeps people from ever really finding actual solutions because you know what didn't work for any of the problems in our society the jail and the militant behaviors if it didn't work for anything why is it going to work for this one anyway i just say that because that's every true. time you hear somebody talk about it it's this grandiose hey, fucking kill them all that's my opinion like it's fucking cool to say that but like does it help that sounds like you're going to harm more children by making it like some scary drug addict like behavior it didn't work with any other addiction that's hmm. all i'm trying to it's an addiction i might listen i don't have this shit <laughs> I, I don't think kids are attractive. I'm not into that at all. Like, just, just in case there's any fucking clarifications. I do, having researched it, not see how it's any different than other addictions. And if it doesn't work to criminalize addiction, why are we treating that? Like, why are we trying to solve an issue with inefficient ways because it makes our egos feel safer? Mm -hmm. Like, data-driven it's a stupid way to look at the problem. But I like the way he exposes the truth of this situation. Like almost telling the kids like i know this happened to you but don't make me your victim almost like arming the people with something to say even if it's very little or small i thought that was fascinating then you have the chorus which is just hard hitting um and if you do feel like you want to kill all the pedos i totally get it like i'm not saying that they're good people I'm saying that they should be put in rehabilitation centers where they have therapists and shit yeah. dealing with well, them. Well, I think everybody in jail should get to go to a therapist. And, but I'm, I'm saying that instead of just jails, they should be thrown into more mental health facilities. And it should be approached like a mental health issue because then you'll probably find solutions to the problems rather than the militant jailization and 
I mean, I'm, I'm all for the sex offenders registry list and all that shit too. Like, don't get me wrong, it is important. In fact, you can Google Montreal and like see there was at one point a few years back a list of all the people and where they was just published and whatnot. Yeah. So like, I, I think it has to be. I, uh, sort of. I think you get notified if somebody moves in, but there's not. Re- it wasn't an official list. Hmm, okay. Anyway, so I'm saying like it's a real issue. People should be aware of certain things. I'm just like. I think it should be treated like a mental health issue as well. Anyway, um, when you hear them saying, trust me, don't wait to see what's next, throw into the world's forever trusting, raised in a form of living hell, sing a note, song of rage, live and die within your heart, so beware in the shadows, your family tree awaits in the dark. And again, like, it's just really powerful because, like, I don't know, like, I went through some shit, but it wasn't that kind of shit. And I don't know how I'd be if I went through that kind of shit. Like, that's some fucked up, like, levels of... Yep. Like next levels. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just scary to think about like how that can happen to people. Like it's just fucked up. And I really like how he touches on the fact that it is trust and ins- and security issues and like tapping into the stem of it. Like Dave Mustaine has, like you said, a very deep sense of empathy, and I really think he shows that in this track. Mm-hmm. And then it's just kind of the chorus playing out for a while, just on repeat. And I think even that is symbolic, because at the end of the day, it would be like. Every, like, like in some of the books I've read recently about back in the days, like, and then the 14-year-old girl had to run away from home because every two days the stepdad would show up in her room, and you're like, and then the next thing you know she's on death row, and you're like, wow, my life is cushy, <laughs> right? Like, anyway, I, I know yeah. some of these ideas kind of rolled on a bit, but man, this track is. Somebody accused me of rambling on the Steely Dan review. I ramble. I know it. Um, that's why I podcast. That's why this isn't a 15-minute concise video, because I'm a rambler. Uh, anyway, I love this song in terms of like what it is, what it represents, how it sounds, all of that shit. I give it a 4.5. I think great. it's a really great song. Uh, next, uh, oh, yeah, just before we move on, I just can't figure out how it fits into the dave mustaine story because I, I couldn't find any evidence that he went through this himself so it kind of threw my whole story arc through a wrench and there's another song on here that also throws my story arc through like a wrench mm-hmm. and we'll get to that so if you guys think my story arc idea is like garbage let me know in the comments anyway banger alert it's euthanasia do you know what makes this song particularly interesting to me what he's singing about us like literally our age group like, this is a song about we're the youth in Asia people, mm-hmm. and now we're, like, older talking about youth in Asia, the album. The but, irony. But it, well, I don't know if it's irony. It's something. Uh, but, like, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's almost like hearing Dave Mustaine saying, all the shit millennials are complaining about today, it's real. We are, in fact, fucking them. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. thanks, Dave. I really appreciated this one. I mean... It's kind of straight up. Like, who'd believe that with the way things are here, we'd be going anywhere telling people how to live? I, don't, I mean, obviously, he had some idea what was to come, but holy fuck, when you think about the last 20 years of the American history, especially as a Canadian bystander, <laughs> and then we think about Harper and how Harper decided to get all American and interfere with international politics at a point where Canada got attacked. Like, that's the level of... Why are we interfering in this stuff? We're freaking Canada, you know? Um, and, and, and just the, the general arrogance of the Western world, always right. assuming it knows what's up with... Like, there's no, Canada is not a democracy by any, like, conventional understanding of democracy. We don't vote on very much. We vote on dudes. But we don't even... So we vote for people on a poster. And then the party gets the seat and they put anybody in our seat if they want. They don't have to put the guy in the poster. They can rearrange and shuffle and shit. Yeah. Meaning, like we we don't really vote on laws. We don't we don't really vote. Is that like I think the I think Americans uh, I think you guys get like questions. On, That's true. Like your but America. Like we just get like pick a party. So That's America, it. with the lobbyist system, has a lower democratic rating right now than I think we do. But honestly, like, who the fuck are we to preach democracy like we have democratic? The illusion of choice is a huge thing in both of our countries, more so than... Yo, know, people, like, here's an example in a Canadian issue. There's a pipeline. 
Yep. That is pipeline violated all the treaties with the natives. Yep. So we're being assholes just like our, our, our brothers down south. You know, we're just as, well, I'm not going to say it, but we're just as bad, in my opinion, at a systemic level. Um, and if 90% of Canadians were to stand up and say, we are not in support of this pipeline, the pipeline would go through anyway, because it's not about democracy. It's about dollar signs. And that's the facts of Canadian democracy. That's I the mean, fact. that's uh, unfortunately a lot of places. But that's not real democracy then. The people do not have the power in either of our countries, is what I'm saying. We have the illusion of choice. Things happen, and then the government... Like, look at the last three and a half, four months. How much democratic choice existed in our two countries here? Mm-hmm. Look how many laws got passed. Look how many things... Ha- Canada lost a credit score on the global credits. Like, like our, our credit score dropped because we overextended our monies, according to the World Bank people. Like, that's nuts to think. Were, were you consulted? No. It was just like, boom, everything happened, and now we're just going to deal with it. And hey, democracy. Anyway. So I look at this, so it's like, who the fuck are we telling people how to live? Honestly, we always do that in this part of the world. I mean, just got to look at Facebook. It's totally something the youth inherited. Uh, this euthanasia crowd, I mean. And it's a funny name because euthanasia, yep. get it? Um, anyway, who would believe we'd spend more shipping drugs and guns than to educate our sons? Hey, we're the sons that didn't get that education money. Well. And you're a daughter. No, I mean, it's worse for the kids today. You're right. It's way fucking worse for the kids today. When I look at the education, Quebec actually used to have, when we were in high school, one of the best education programs outside of history, because who the fuck teaches history, right? But otherwise, we did some solid shit, and now it's garbage. Like, it's fucking garbage. Like, you can't even fail a grade until you're 16. Like, it's fucked. Oh, really? So, like, and you got to think about the implications of that. You perform poorly in school. And all it takes is, because there's three parties involved, the teacher, the school administration, and the parents. If any one of these three parties says, fuck it, the kid passes, the kid passes. All three have to unanimously agree to fail a kid. You can tell me the school's keeping troublesome fucking... No. So we've lowered the standards of success to make the scores fucking better. If that is not... A poetic symbol for corporate America and data analysis. I don't know what is. The geeks in the crowd, I'll get the fuck. I mean, the web analysis people, y'all know what the hell I just said. Bonnie's like, I don't know what you just said. Well, I know what you said. It's just. It's just the world is vain. Yep. Anyway, sorry, but that's what they did. And it's like, ah, Dave, you telling people what's up in 94? Oh shit, you're like one of the early truth tellers. Respect. Anyway, I can't help but think, I can't help but think, I can't help but think. I like that in Hebrew when you repeat something three times, it adds ultimate power. So when you see that kind of repetition, it adds ultimate power. So he's forced to address it that someone's forsaken you and me. The powers that be and all that shit. Hmm. I like that, man. Luck deserted me and the truth beat up my brains. Men rise on stepping stones of their slaves to higher things. I've stepped over lots of bodies on my way. Thanks for the age information. Don't need no more anything. And I think what's interesting here is how he kind of brings it back to himself a bit in his ascent and his rise and maybe how he treated people based on the system that was surrounding him and everything he's done. But now that he's older and wiser and kind of sees things as they are, it's like, oh, I don't need your advice, you corrupt fuckers. I'm going to go back to do things in the way that they are. And then, you know, brings it back into, like, his truth. So I do think that, in a sense, this euthanasia track does tie it back into the story of Dave owning some of the consequences of the life. It's like the great epiphany right. in his world. And maybe even Family Tree serves as another style of epiphany for Dave that comes up before the next track, which will make sense when we talk about it then. Y'all know what it is. Um... I don't know. We are the damned of all the world with sadness in our hearts, the wounded of the wars. We've been hung out to dry. And it's like, it's really cool to just hear him saying this, you know, in regards to like commenting directly on how we got fucked. And you look at things like the housing market today and the job situations. And ever since I've been in the Canadian workforce, which has been 14 years, our average raise has been two and a half percent, but inflation, honest inflation, including rent and power and all that, it's been way higher, like four or five percent. So just think about that. My entire life of working 
we have made less money than inflation you in just Canada. just can't catch up. And we're all poorer because of it. We we're all, richer. No, very few of us are richer. <laughs> but the richer are richer. Anyway, you didn't want us anyway, and now you're making up our minds. You tell us how to run our lives, and we run for euthanasia. And I, I kind of like that, too, because it's what I call middle-class mediocrity. It's these norms that are put into place. It's this polite, anti-contrarian, absolute suck it up. I can't, I can't fucking deal with this shit and then you hide and you implode and nobody speaks for the truth of what they are nobody speaks for what's right so you have all these boring circular arguments how everyone's trying to respect everyone and i don't mean this in like a negative way i mean this in like this petty like like sometimes people do bad things or sometimes people approach situations in ways that are wrong or sometimes in our efforts to spare feelings we just repeat mistakes and do all this dumb shit whereas people are so sensitive and worried about offending each other that we can't speak out on real truthful issues so i believe that's the middle class i think it's this pacifistic I'm gonna go live in my corner and take care of my family and have my house and have my little life and all that all those fucking people who whatever and then there's just everyone else like hi but there's the rest of the world here Shh, that's offensive material that's why this video is gonna get demonetized because we talked about pedophiles and shit there's no way you can talk about that and have a fucking ad on your video <laughs> anyway so i like that we run for euthanasia line it's almost like we're competing to be clipped yeah. But at the same time, we, we run for it in like, like it's a cool line because the language has running for it like we're trying to get it, but also like, you know, trying to escape it. And it kind of has like both those feelings at the same time. I really like this song. I really think it's it's fucking amazing. Uh, the, the, the way the instrumental part comes in right before the solos and shit, I thought that was fucking proper. It, it was one of my favorites on this album. Uh, I give it a five on five. Nice. It's truthfully blessed. Yeah. Um... So, um, I mean, according to whatever Genius was saying, as I went on Genius, uh, you know, it's obviously, it's basically what, what you were saying. It's like the older generation hanging out the younger generation to, dr to dry. So it's exactly like what the cover is. So I don't know if the cover inspired the song or the song inspired the cover, but I think that that's cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that it's, that's just what it is. That like kind of like the past... Uh, kind of like dictates and controls the the future and like the fu future generations and um, I think the future that we as adults um, what we want and what we idealize uh, is what we create for the next generation so nobody gets the perfect life right because we're all creating for what we want but then we die and then the, the next generation is like well we don't want this and then they're trying to fix it and so it's just this ongoing cycle of you know I don't know of just generations of generations just doing things differently and that's you know humanity and we evolve and I think that's great but I think it's just funny that that we're kind of in this hamster wheel of life um, yeah and then you kind of basically you know you're screwed because the older generation whatever it is you know they did um, a bunch of shit to them kind of like the next generation right and uh, you know, a youth in a euthanasia, if you will. Um, so yeah, I mean, I like the I like what they're just what he's discussing, and it has a really great beat. It definitely makes you want to headbang and pretend, or you know, and not I guess you don't have to pretend, just rock out. Um, and it's definitely what I would having uh, no idea what the definition is. I would say it is a good thrash song because uh, it makes me want to thrash around. So I'm just assuming that that's where that came from. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's a really great song. It's inventive and uh, sort of like a, a fuck you to the men and like the older generation. And, you know, he's very angry and is basic, basically ba uh, blaming uh, the boomers, who isn't, um, for all the shit that they uh, have to deal with because their lives were more important right and they had all the picket fences and all this you know american dream and this lovely home yes they had a war but um you know they are really enjoying it and it comes at a cost to you know like we're seeing the environmental issues that we are seeing today because of what the older generation did and you know various other things besides the environment but um yeah it, it's a it's great i mean definitely an original topic as well uh i gave it a 4.6 on five all right why don't we move on to I Thought I Knew It All 
just does it again with them fucking hooks, man. You're just sitting there and it's like, maybe I don't like it, but I have no choice. I can't sing. <laughs> but that part there, oh my gosh, it's just such a hook. Every time I heard it, it gets stuck in my head. And I'm like, I'm truly impressed just by how many hooks they have like that. Like vocal hooks, it's like a good guitar riff to me. Like, you know how some of y'all geek out on guitar riffs and you hear it and you're like, yeah, that's my shit. <laughs> I don't feel that way about guitar riffs. I feel that way about vocal hooks and bass lines. Um, anyway, uh, how do you feel about this track? Um, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's okay. I mean, this one is like, not like my favorite one. Um, but uh, basically he's talking about, you know, sort of, you know, there's a reason why things don't go as planned uh, and, you know, he's just kind of having to deal with that. And, you know, even if people don't like him, you know, even if just one person hears what he's saying and feels his message, like that's what's important in the end to him. You know, he just needs that one person. And you do hear like, you know, uh, artists saying that, you know, if my art, you know, inspires or changes or, you know, means something to one person, then it's worth it. Right. And I think that that's true. And and, um, yeah, and, like, all the shit he goes through kind of teaches him lessons uh, that he, you know, he needed to learn in life. You know, you know, someone decided that he needed to, to learn that message. And, yeah, so that's what it was. And, you know, he thought he knew it all. Uh, again, that's also, like, you know, a lot of, like, teenagers, you know, they, they always say, oh, teenagers, oh, you think, you know, you're so young, you think you know it all, but, you know, real life is going to, you know, kick you in the ass one day, and it just kind of sounds like that's exactly what happened. Um, and I think he's, like, I feel like he's almost, like, surrendering to God, and, um, you know, and, like, you know, God and his, like, all-knowing self, and, you know, he's kind of just, just going to, follow the path that's God that God's leading him on um, and I just even though he's not specifically saying uh, God or you know anything like that like I, I that, that's what I'm taking away from this one and um, or, you know that's kind of what I think the undertone of like his main message is and uh, I read that he you know he grew up Jehovah Witness um, and now is a born-again Christian so he does definitely have uh, you know a pull towards Christianity and um, so I think that that's kind of what it is without necessarily saying it and kind of being preachy I guess so it's again it's really cool that that's kind of like thrown into like this mix of stuff that I wouldn't think he would be singing about so um, it's good it's not my favorite and I found the ending to be a little bit weird um, but uh, yeah it's fine I gave it a 4.2 on 5 I really like the tune. I think it's really strong. Mm -hmm. I think it comes through. It is short and simple for what it is, but we've just had a bunch of like epiphany sounding big topics, right? Yeah. Stuff that sounds like it would like fuck up your conventions and understanding. Like after almost dying, realizing that you have a mission and purpose in your life, but also the corruptions and darkness and evils of the world. So that leaves you with what? Maybe the sense of, wow, I used to be like that guy. I thought I knew it all. But really, I don't necessarily like it. And it feels like he's he's taking on the weight of responsibility for the new tone of his life almost. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not saying he wasn't like living away, but it, it's just how it comes off to me in this particular tune. Like, you know, it's just somewhere there's a reason why things go like they do. Somewhere there's a reason why some things just fall through. We don't always see them for what they really are. But I know there's a reason. Just can't see it from this far. And man, that's got such wisdom in it, right? Like yeah. it's the understanding that there's a lot of complicated things in life. And sometimes you go through shit. And it takes maybe half a decade to like fully process, understand, and appreciate how those things played out to the bigger picture of your life. Like I'm a firm believer in a butterfly effect. A, it's a sick movie. One of the only times Ashton Kutcher acted. Oh, I said that. Um, he doesn't act well. He's just there in most shows. But He's he really, he really tried in the butterfly effect. Uh, but like the idea that the ripple effect of how things in your life happen. Like if I didn't learn to play bass, maybe I wouldn't be sitting here today doing this. Maybe there's just this weird little connection of things together that flowed through. And yeah. if I'd never bought Gertrude, my whole life would be so different. Either way, I think part of it is the consequences. Like, imagine having to sober up. In my case, not having to eat half a tub of ice cream every day. Not being allowed to do that anymore. Not being allowed to just splurge on junk food and ice caps. Because I like the health gains I've made. 
but that's the thing is like understanding the correlations in life and putting these connections together and also accepting that sometimes you just have to have some level of faith that you must do certain things even if you don't fully get them like if i stop eating this ice cream even though i still feel like a fat fuck i will not be a fat fuck one day is the goal and a year ago i felt that way and now i've still have work to do but i've definitely come a long way mm -hmm. and if you look through like all parts of life like maybe you go through some shit like you have a breakup or you have to go sober from drugs <laughs> maybe you're feeling this is all miserable but mm -hmm. there's a point to it all and then the idea of going on and continuing to fight through it like maybe i don't like it but i have no choice i know that somewhere someone hears my voice it just repeats it it's like realizing that everything you do matters because there is that consequence and i know a lot of people a lot of good people i know feel that nothing they do matters so they don't try and they don't put their art into the world they write their stories they write their poetry sing their songs and it's all behind closed doors and nobody shares anything and nobody believes that they're worth anything and can do anything and it's just i think i just kind of wish more people live like dave here and realize that at the micro level all your actions matter like you know sometimes somebody will just leave a comment on a video and it'll be like blah 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 you're thank you whatever that's what they'll say to me and it makes my whole day better they have no fucking idea how much should be impact it actually had on my day yep anyway that's all i'm trying to say is people out there hear your voice so you should use it but i love the humility angle i thought i knew it all i thought i had it made how could it end this way i thought i knew it all so it's like realizing that there's just some shit to learn from that as time changes and there's lessons to be learned and it's really a song about wisdom it's about gaining wisdom after processing everything on the album and i thought that was fucking cool i thought it was also just a really strong y'all know i expressed my love of that vocal hook mm -hmm. so i gave it a 4.5 the music's tight everything about the guitar playings and shit is super tight like i said in the first video we're terrible at describing it but it's all super tight and really great to listen to anyway the next one's called black curtains this one's a little like out there from my story arc too because it feels like this is like a throwback where we can actually still fuck shit up evil armageddon doom and gloom song and like i'm just not sure how this ties into my story arc like i feel like it's a little hard maybe um accepting the truth of life gives you this nihilistic feeling of destruction and doom maybe this is representation <laughs> of a battle for the good of the world like i don't i don't know because it starts off like everything's helter skelter it's all fucked up uh listen i warn you run for cover bang it happened time's up armageddon fire meltdown the sky is crumbling and you're like <laughs> i like it <laughs> head banging fucking feels good to listen to it's got this slower but heavy cadence to it it almost feels like older than everything else on this album yeah like it feels like it has a throwback vibe to it maybe i'm wrong but that's what it felt like then uh black curtains never ending maybe a sense of anxiety doom and gloom shit escape you're joking can't find a place to run hair is burning my flesh is bubbling out blood is boiling taste copper on my tongue fate is coming welcome it with a smile and it's like i do wonder if maybe this is just a giant metaphor for anxiety and not trusting people maybe and that like em the emotion that comes with it but it also just kind of because like you have that like something's under my skin something very strange playing with my mind tempting me to do you in so it's like when you're trying to be good but there's still that devil there that's playing with your mind kind of tempt and so maybe to fit it back into my narrative because that's what i'm trying to do here um it's like the opposite i thought i knew it all humility whatever and then no the demons are still there because yeah. there is that idea of the devil on my you know shoulder and the angels in my pocket so there's still like this recklessness to it yeah so i think that's kind of cool am i dreaming my heart pounds on my chest hell for ransom in a spider's web suffocating no one hears my call never ending till the black curtain falls tell me that's not like anxiety attacks like when you hear people describe their i don't know how much you deal with anxiety i don't think you do not really but it kind of feels like an anxiety attack like the paranoid like your heart palpitations like fucking closing in like you can't handle anything life just irrational and shit hmm. and so i look at it like that 
And then you have like in the last part, you know, snakes around me offering their death kiss to me. Snakes, you know, maybe people like offering drugs, offering the temptations. Maybe like he's feeling tripping out of his way. And so people are there like, hey, buddy, you can calm down. Just take this little needle over here and do your thing. Mm -hmm. Down, I'm drowning. How long? I hold my breath. Dogs are chasing. My legs are paralyzed. Pray, don't find me. My life is fading fast. And so it kind of makes me wonder if this is just like this spiral out situation. And actually, I think about it more now. I do feel like it's a little bit like that anxiety building up to doing the drugs and the overdose. Yep. And I think it's a bit of a metaphor for that. I don't know if that was your thoughts, but that's where I got to at the end of during all of this. I figured out in real time right now. Yeah. Um, what did you give it? Oh, I, I gave it a 4.5. I think it's 4. a really 5. strong okay. fucking song. Yeah. Um, this one definitely has like a nice heaviness to it um and you know i think he's just kind of talking about everything is going to shit and it's like the end for you it's like the end for him i don't know i think you know black curtains symbolize death maybe um like that was my implication um and it, it is very like you know exactly like what you mentioned like uh gruesome and imaginative and like you know kind of like he's feeling you know his skin crawling and he doesn't know what to do and um you know he doesn't know if he's a, he's awake or he's dreaming Dreaming, and it definitely kind of sounds like he's on like a drug trip um, or like he's like in that kind of mind or maybe he is coming down. Maybe he's, um, you know, he he's uh, what is it called when you come off of drugs? Crashing. No, no, coming no. down. No, like when you like stop it, like full blown Cold turkey. Relapsing. No. I don't know. Jonesing. Jonesing is a term that would be used to craving drugs. No, not craving. When you like come off of drugs, like forever, and you're like sick for like the first like few days. What is that called? I don't remember, but everyone knows what you're you know what about. I'm talking about. I'm trying to think of it. I can't think of it. Um, detoxing. Yeah, like he's detoxing. Like he's like going through this, and like you know, my my like thoughts are like based off of like what I've seen on intervention and like train spotting so um <laughs> like that's kind of like my thoughts when i think of somebody like coming off of drugs and like some books i read so where it just seems like so hard and like you don't know if you're like as asleep or awake and it's just like you're just having like these nightmares and you're coming off of drugs and like you're like feeling like that so i thought it was kind of more like that like something to do with that so i give this a 4.35 because it's interesting and it it's but i don't really i'm not sure what it is and it doesn't sound, sound like you are either so well i, I feel more confident now that i've thought about it because yeah. like you look at the first verse shit's chaotic right and keep in mind the whole album almost feels like this battle for dave to like do the right thing so now you're in this stressful moment as kind of time goes on you're trapped in this moment you can't get out you're trying to feel the flesh under your skin it's like an itching like mm -hmm. a craving like a desire yeah, for it you know exactly. fate's coming you can't escape it you're just gonna go do it and then you know and like the taste of copper on his tongue made me think of like him like kind of like because well, it's, it, like, it's like when you take the drugs like you taste that or and like you've cut your fucking mouth in anticipation and it's like a coppery yeah, taste and, of blood yeah it's it's just like this kind of or like you're even just like thinking about it so much that it, like you're tasting it for the rest of the song it's like he's spiraling out high yeah. and lost in his own mind until he fades it out and i really think that because like it just flows so perfectly into the concept of the next track which is victory. Yep. Because, like, in this one, he's all, like, not even close. Not even close. Not even close. To overdose. And mm -hmm. then it's like, all oh, right, because the last song he's tripping out on drugs. And no, when it all comes down to it, fucking victory. Yep. How do you feel about this one? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think he, that's kind of what it is. And at the same time, like he's kind of like throwing in, um, you know, his his past albums and songs and um, how he was wild in the past and all the shit that he did and um, how uh, he like was never close to overdosing so like you know he's superior than that so he's not going to do that and he is the victor in his drug conquests um and you know it's basically him being i think uh you know having victory over drugs um uh, but like i don't know if i necessarily hear that or, or if it's just 
like that he is better than drugs like he's like whatever i can't well, i, feel I like, think it's kind of maybe the same like thing. at this state it's almost like a, a testament to this state in his life i'm not even close to that anymore mm -hmm. i'm not that's not where i'm at in my life yeah. i have victory over this because it felt like in so many cases he's describing even the destruction with it even in this song the whole first verse it's clever because it kind of builds up to like we did all this and then some crazy shit happened yeah where he almost dies but now he's not even close because he's at this fucking point of victory yeah yeah i don't know i just found it like he but the way he just kind of comes off is that he's sort of like smug about like how how much better he is now and like you know like how he's not controlled by them anymore and it's just kind of like a funny feeling that i get from him i but feel like he's happy and proud Oh, okay. I mean, like this is like I just found that he just like like well, no no amount of drugs can kill him. Like kind of like I took it like completely feeling. like more like all this shit happened, but at the end of the day, even though I came through and lived this whole life, I'm still victorious. Yeah. And so it's kind of in that same vein of bloody heroes and that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's also, like, it's a nice one because it's I found this one to be, um, you know, like quite, like, heavy metal league, very rock-like, you know, like, you know, it was, like, good for the people. So it's a good closer in that sense. Uh, you know, it's fun, it's decent, uh, you know, he's a wild man, and it's, like I said, fun to rock out to. So I gave this a 4.4 4 on 5. According to Dave Mustaine, the best line he's ever written is not even close to overdose. I mean, I'll give it to him. That delivery, it's right up there in vocal earworm hooky shit. Like, I've had it all week also. Because there's quite a few out lines on this album that I feel like are just stuck in my head. But the, not even close. The way he says it, mm -hmm. the, like, is really cool to me. But just, this one's cool because it starts off, like, fucking zero. Like, it's just, like, right away Dave singing, like, Now one day I was telling everyone that killing is my business and I was hung like a martyr. I was like, is hung like a martyr? Like, a song? I couldn't figure that out. I was like, is he saying his dick's big? No, I think, like, he's kind of strung up, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Killing is my business album thing. And then apparently looking down from the cross and skull beneath the skin. These are sonic titles. Prophesized last rites. Love to death, my friends. Then I started getting bad omens in my head. Good morning, Black Friday. Will I wake up dead? If I ain't superstitious, then this won't mean a thing. But some crazy shit uh, has happened since The Conjuring. So by playing into all of his, like, titles and tying them in, it's a really cool trope when anyone pulls it off. But really he's kind of saying i put my attitude out to the world i started living this shit i started talking about all the dark shit that's gonna happen to me and then look at that it's almost like a prophet i brought it to life but end of the day not even close to overdose because it didn't happen he moved on grinded through yep. had fingers in my eyes had needles in my veins a knife right through my heart i'm victory so i feel like in this it's i defeated these things that tried to beat me so it's not like bragging like i did all the drugs it's more like i beat addiction i am victorious i can still be here like i feel like it's like a addict's anthem you know like <laughs> From that point of view, I thought it was really cool. You know, it came anarchy, set the world to fire, paint a hook in my mouth in my darkest hour, corruption of the world. I caught on at peace sells, nobody's buying. I'm like, wait a second, that's yep. an album cover. Title. title, yeah. Okay, and then I was like, ignorant religion, holy wars, and the dying tornado nearly got me by the skin of my teeth. Yep. And now I know what Holy Wars is. That's a good fucking album opener. That is a great album opener. I've listened to it multiple times. It is definitely... I like it more than every song on this album. Um, anyway, uh, it nearly got me by the skin of my teeth. This is my life, foreclosure of my dreams. May the past rust in peace. I'm like, that is definitely a fucking album title. And then I checked the Genius Annotations, and it turned out they're all fucking album titles and song titles. Yep. And then in Hangar 18, and that's still cool. Like, may the past rust in peace in Hangar 18. Like, it's a fucking plane rusting over there, you know? Mm -hmm. And Countdown to Extinction, I'm pretty sure that's another album title. Just a Bad Dream, Lucretia said, and then like that. And then it just repeats the rest of it for a while. But you're left with this, like, fast-paced, fun, energetic tune that just feels like both celebrating Dave's career or Megadeth's career and the victory over the hardships that came from it. And on this personalized album full of almost like this candid expose into the soul of Dave Mustaine, I feel like it is the perfect fucking song to close this album out yep. on. And I think it's great. I give it a 4.5 on 5. I love the energy. It's another catchy earworm that's going to get stuck in your head forever. And there's quite a few tracks on this album that I think really fucking pull that off. So kudos on the song yeah and i guess that brings us to the end of this album review 
Uh, I gave the album a 4.57 on 5. This yeah. is absolutely a classic to me in the regards that I feel like you can throw this on in 10 years. And in the nature of the lyrics, the way that he wrote it, it's done in a way where it's almost timeless. Yeah, like that's The true. fact is, everything about this album still applies to people in 2020 with the same level of everything. Yep. Euthanasia could be us talking about Gen A. I think that's what the Gen Zs yep. are after or whatever. That's right. I didn't mean Zs. I meant the, like it's like all of this album like still applies. the kids applies. that are born now. There's still drug addicts. There's still dark crimes happening in families. There's still all of it. The music, fuck, it's better than a lot of shit. It's 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 amazing. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, there are a couple of tracks, obviously, that stylistically were not like a thousand percent my cup of tea. Fine, but like I could throw this album on, and I've done it now multiple times. Track one to track twelve. We did. We didn't do the other ones. Why? Because I didn't like the mixing on the other one. Can we just the mixing on the fucking remastered version is gosh not fun. Like there's a warmth and like an airiness to the proper mixed versions that we did. I like that one. I got, we went back and forth. Bonnie didn't really hear a huge difference between mm-hmm. the two of them. Oh, to me, it was like I couldn't listen to the remastered version after hearing the original version because the remastered version just sounded like shit. Like it just sounded like yep. they took everything and they squished it together so that the fucking bar was really fat and loud so that in the loudness wars of pop mastering, the songs could compete on fucking Spotify. But me, I like that imperfection and warmth of that proper like distribution. Where it, it, in the, okay, so in the original mixes, you almost can feel every single instrument layered out in its own distinct track complimenting creating this surrounding environment of full sound Mm -hmm. in the remastered version it almost feels like everything is compressed into a single fucking track and everything's the same volume and levels and i just didn't enjoy it so i didn't want to fucking do that extra track plus the other two are demos so that's just what's up with that so i don't know what you or nothing I don't know what you prefer, but I, I don't know if we even brought that up at all, but it just had to be said that that remastered version was not pleasurable to me from an engineering perspective. But yeah, I love this album. Real well done. I, I'm probably more inclined to like the older, thrashier shit. Like the, fa- the more close it gets to punk rock, the more I'm going to like it. Because yo, Killing Is My Business is fire. I heard the beginning of that album. I'm like, bro, that's my <laughs> shit right there. Um, yeah, um, I, I like this, uh, surprisingly, right? Like, I really, um, I, I was shocked. Um, not that I was, like, shocked. I mean, I feel like I've kind of gotten, like, past the point of um, really just hating anything. I could find good things if it's well done, you know, and somebody actually took their time to make whatever they, you know, type of music they've made. I can try and find, like, you know, some good in it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it was definitely not what I was uh, looking forward to, to listening to, and, but it got better and better as I listened to it. And um, I gave this a 4.46 on 5, so it's an 89%. That's a pretty damn good grade for me. Um, like, I don't really give, like, I mean, that's pretty close to, like, 4.5. Like, you know, the... Ironically, good, right? she gave us a higher grade than most of the hip hop albums that not, she allegedly not, I, likes. I mean, not all of them, but like but most I, of them, yeah. No, I've given higher grades, but like this is like a pretty, most. pretty decent grade. Not all. So, um, yeah, I mean, right. he he does a good job. Scribble, they make we a, get make a death. one step closer to metalhead. Mm. Got you on this. We work I mean, in this. I'm open. To, I'm open to it, but I don't know. That's I went right. to I went to like a, a like a heavy metal so, bar one time and I was very out of place. So Megadeth is coming to Place Belle in Laval, which is right next to Montreal next summer. We'll be there. You'll be. We'll there. be there. Mm. We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you all. I don't know if you have more. No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, good job. So Bonnie's impressed. That's that's the real mark of this, right? If you can impress Bonnie. Because I give high grades. It's a win. Everybody gets 4.5. I'm fucking useless. Don't trust my grades. Bonnie's grades count. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching. I totally appreciate y'all being here with us. I look forward to seeing whatever comments you have. I'll be down there answering you back. If you do choose to insult me, censor yourself a bit so it gets through YouTube's community fucking striking shit. So, like, <laughs> I don't want you to think... Insult us appropriately. I don't, want to th- I don't want you to think that I deleted your mean comment if you choose to leave one. I didn't. I'll answer you. 
and if it's the morning i can't promise to be in the best moods but i try i understand that your opinion is important and i'm a bit of a shithead so i, I am aware of my flaws but i love your feedbacks i look forward to seeing what y'all think because the truth is i like this album so i want to fucking geek out on this album with y'all i want to hear your stories and see yeah. megadeth live like i already seen like my homeboy at work sent me his footage of fucking reckoning day at gigant tour or whatever the fuck was here in 2015 i don't remember what it was uh either way i look forward to seeing some shit live anyway uh look forward to seeing your comments like the chat video if you did subscribe to the channel if you feel this shit and special thanks to the patrons is milka damsey chris prada jonathan barnes dj black hurricane linda williams scribble carl they dope they support what we do Scribble used this patron powers to tell us to review this album, That's which right. was great because now Bonnie's going to be listening to some mega deaths and we know it. A tout le monde. I mean, a tous mes amis. Anyway, it's so catchy. It is. It's so good. Um, so, anyway, thank you for the request. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I make music. You can check that out on this channel. I put, even got music videos and stuff. She filmed them. She's so it cool. It can't be bad. It can be. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank y'all again. And most importantly, Live long and prosper, everyone. Peace, guys.